From secretive cities you're not allowed to go to, to nuclear-powered aircraft, here are 14 mysterious and secretive Soviet projects. Number 14, the 1K117 Shadi. One of the secret weapons the Soviet Union was keeping up their sleeves was the 1K117 Shadi, which was a self-propelled laser vehicle. The powerful vehicle used a battery with laser projectors mounted on a turret. These were equipped with the intention of disabling optical electrical equipment of enemy missiles or ground and aerial vehicles. They hoped it would be capable of shooting missiles or planes out of the sky quickly and effectively. The project began in the 1970s and continued until the 1980s. The Soviets, of course, wanted to keep the whole thing secret, but the US's spy network was just too strong and they were able to obtain information from defectors about this mysterious vehicle. The Soviets eventually deemed the project to be too expensive anyways and it was abandoned. Thankfully, we'll never have to deal with these laser tanks in the battle. Number 13, the TKB 022 PM. This bizarre rifle was developed in the 1960s as a futuristic bullpup design during the Cold War that almost looks like the predecessor of some modern rifles we see now. This was developed by Soviet inventor Korobov, who came up with numerous strange weapon designs. It was supposed to be a competitor to the AKM and used a radically vertically moving bolt design that allowed it to be compact. This had a 30 round magazine and can fire up to 560 rounds per minute. This design, however, was rejected by the Soviet army due to its unconventional look and its difficulty to properly maintain on the battlefield. Number 12, Closed Cities. Located in the Chelyabinsk Oblast region, just north of Kazakhstan, Orziorsk is considered to be a closed town due to how close it is to the Mayok plant. This was just one example of an estimated 60 cities and towns in Russia that are closed off to travel from other regions. The goal here was to mainly produce weaponized plutonium for nuclear weapons. The Mayok plant is also a facility that processes nuclear waste and decommissions decaying weapons of mass destruction. No one really knew what the heck was going on here due to the isolation of the region, but the word began to spread after a while. You can only keep that many cities secret for so long. An explosion took place here and spread a lot of toxic waste into many lakes and rivers of the Chelyabinsk Blast region. Number 11, Sputnik. USA was seriously losing the space race against Russia. They had already sent Sputnik, humans, and even animals into space before we had barely done anything. Americans were quite worried after the Sputnik launch, fearing that the Russians were constantly watching us from space. The secret satellite program came out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, which we'll get to a little bit later on. The amount of secrecy to complete this project was rather extensive, and much strategy planning was needed. Scientists spent more time with their rockets than their families for about three years. The Soviets didn't immediately use the launch as propaganda, and they kept their accomplishments as a secret. It wasn't until the Americans were able to hear the beeping from the satellite when they noticed that it was actually the Soviets who beat us to space. Number 10, the Caspian Sea Monster. This rare image shows a strange design of an experimental Russian plane taking off from the water. This got the name of the Caspian Sea Monster when word and photos got out about it. It's rumored to weigh 540 tons and had one of the largest max ton takeoffs in history. It was designed to look like this to zoom across the ocean without being detected by radar. Here in this photo, we see a digitally remastered, lifelike image of what the Caspian Sea Monster would have looked like as it's barely skimming just a few feet above the water. It was also possible that they designed this to carry large missiles which would have pulled up close to shorelines of the US and fired off, which this image illustrates. Also known as the KM or Karabi Monster by the Russians, the Americans picked up startling satellite images of this beast and were kind of worried. Number 9, the Flying Tank. Some military helicopters out there might get the nickname of the flying tank, but this strange prototype literally is a flying tank. This is what's known as the Antonov A-40, which is basically a six-ton tank attached to a glider plane. This illustration you see here shows the design of the glider plane from above and allows you to imagine what it would be like if tanks could fly through the skies. The idea was to use gliders to gently transport tanks into the front lines, but this appeared to have some difficulties. This Soviet design never actually saw any time on the battlefield, but was tested out in 1942. The extreme drag created by the tank's sheer weight was enough for them to call off the project and the Soviets to look for another way to transport tanks. Still terrifying nonetheless. Number 8, 
Object 279. The Soviets were no strangers when it came to making high-quality tanks, and a few different prototypes were created, hoping they'd be effective. Object 279 was a heavy tank, weighing 66 tons, and it was developed before the 1960s. They were hoping the design would be more resistant in case of a nuclear explosion. Work on the tank started in 1957 in the city of Leningrad, and the most notable thing about this tank came to be its thick armor. The maximum thickness of the armor was 10.6 inches. It also featured a shield, which would hopefully keep it from tipping over in case it was introduced to a nuclear shockwave. Needless to say, this thing would have been absolutely indestructible if the project was complete, but by no means would it be fast. The Soviets chose to research other things and wanted lighter vehicles that were easy to transport. Number 7. The Corkscrew Tank The Soviet Union was quite creative, and they had to be, in order to get their tanks across long distances of this big country. Corkscrew tanks weren't their prettiest prototype. Attaching corkscrews to the bottom of the tank, essentially replacing the treads, it was considered for a long period of time and was tested out across Russia on a few occasions. This was only tested out during the Cold War and the design made it quite adaptable to snowy climates. This essentially made it so it wouldn't get stuck in the snow like many tanks have experienced. Despite being able to move forward, it really couldn't do much else and it wasn't too maneuverable. It couldn't be used on normal terrain, and it wasn't taken too seriously after a few tests. It still does look like something you wouldn't want to mess with either way. Number 6. Soviet Flying Saucers This document was written by the CIA about unconventional military aircraft that they believed the Soviets were using in May of 1953. The Canadian government was plotting the construction of flying saucers with great secrecy, hoping to use them as futuristic weapons of war. This was also six years before the development of the Avro car we see here. It claims that German engineers had already successfully designed a flying saucer towards the end of World War II, but never had the chance to put it to use. They claimed that when the Red Army was marching towards Berlin, it's very possible that they uncover the Nazis' blueprints, or possibly suggesting that scientists were captured who were working on it. A German scientist by the name of George Klein claims that the flying saucers were produced in factories in 1941. He goes on to describe the capabilities of this aircraft, claiming that it could go about 1,300 miles per hour. It's believed that some of these aircraft actually made their way into Africa after the testing, causing UFO sightings. Number 5. The Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan Many of the Soviet Union's new buildings were built far away from the capital city of Moscow and into occupied territory or satellite states. The Soviet space program was quite successful and they sent people into space well before the Americans ever did. The area in Kazakhstan is quite remote, so it really seemed as if no one had returned to this place since they left it. The Cosmodrome was the world's first and largest operational space launch facility, and you better believe this place was top secret. All Russian cosmonauts launched from here as well as the Sputnik aircraft we mentioned earlier. This secret facility was also known to test out liquid fuel of nuclear missiles, and it led to many advancements in the Soviet Union's ICBM capabilities. Number 4. Vozrozdene Island this island is located on what was the RLC before it disappeared mysteriously. It was here where the Soviet Union constructed a top secret biological weapons testing facility known as RLS 7. Explore this place on Google Maps and you'll find some eerie ghost towns and abandoned places. The main laboratory was where crews tested multiple effects of fatal diseases and how to spread them effectively. They worked with horrific agents including anthrax, smallpox, the black plague, and maybe more. In 1971, weaponized smallpox was accidentally released, killing three people and infecting ten. Due to the shrink Thinking size of the RLC, the island is more of a peninsula now. Many claim that there are still large stockpiles of anthrax buried here after the facility closed in 1990. And after the 9-11 attack, an effort to find it was made. Anthrax spores can survive underground for decades, so if you come here, be sure to bring some hand sanitizer with you and a hazmat suit. Number 3. The TU-95 LAL Nuclear Aircraft During the Cold War, numerous aircraft were experimented with. With this being the Cold War, nuclear power seemed like the perfect reasonable way to power an aircraft. We do have submarines that use nuclear power and even aircraft carriers, so why not a plane? Both the US and Soviets considered the possibility. The Soviets built a prototype that was known as TU-95 LAL. The nuclear reactor was placed in the fuselage where there was a small bulge that you can see in this photo. It conducted over 40 test flights but with the nuclear reactor turned off a majority of the time. Many believe the project was abandoned because they couldn't find a proper way to shield the radioactivity of the reactor and they also realized that a crash could result in a nuclear explosion on a valuable runway. 
Number 2. The Battle Mole Imagine a vehicle that could travel through water, through land, and underground by mechanically drilling its way to the next target. Sounds pretty insane, right? The Soviets had an interesting idea with this one. Also known as the Subterrene, this experimental vehicle could successfully move underground at a speed of 3 miles an hour. The goal of it was to travel underground, detonate explosives under military installations, which would then cause an earthquake and destroy a bunch of things above ground. It also ran on nuclear power, and the first test proved to be successful, destroying a test target bunker covering a range of 6 miles. Everyone was quite amazed, and they thought they came up with some kind of super secret device, but they were wrong. During the second test, the whole thing blew up, and it was never tested again. And number 1. Tsar Bomba the largest nuclear bomb ever dropped was tested by the Russians in 1961 in the Nova Aya Zembla Archipelago. The bomb was extremely large in size as well, weighing 27 metric tons and measuring in at 8 meters long by 2 meters in diameter. A bomb this large isn't really too useful considering the best method to destroy a city would be to use many bombs scattered across a long range. The largest nuclear device tested by the Americans was equivalent to 15 megatons of TNT, while this bomb dropped by the Russians yielded 57 megatons. The blast was so powerful that it almost killed the pilot who was flying the plane. It's been described as the single most physically powerful device ever used by mankind, and the mushroom cloud you see in this photo is rather shocking to say the least.